Uh, hi, I'm Lewis Ludlam, aka Luds, um, flanker at Northampton Saints and um, part of the England setup at the moment. And um, I'm going to answer a few questions, providing the dog doesn't piss me off too much and, and get too involved. Um, so this one's from Lowell261983. Um, I'm guessing you're an old fella, 83. Um, are you still going on Bargain Hunt? Which is definitely why I answered that question. Probably sitting at home watching Bargain Hunt himself. Um, yeah, well, this is the thing. So I was meant to go on Bargain Hunt um, basically the week before I was uh, going to the World Cup. So I'd agreed to going on and me and Alex Mitchell had signed up about a year and a half before and never expected to get anything back. Um, and of all time, and they literally messaged me. I got a call saying, uh, do you still fancy it before the World Cup? And I sort of said, yeah, well, yeah, I've got sort of a few things on now. Apologies. And they said, um, yeah, they'd, they'd like to get me back on in the future. So um, that's still in the works. I'm just looking for the for the right time to do it. Obviously, COVID's probably set that back a little bit. But um, it's still in my plans for sure and something I'm uh, excited about getting involved in. Um, not that I'm a massive Bargain Hunt fan, but I think we just um, fancy giving it, a, giving it a crack. I mean, how hard could it be? Um, who is the biggest rugby noise in the Saints squad from Ragtop Doss? Oh God, there's a there's a few there's a there's a few different sort of noises. There's the noises that just want to chat rugby, and then there's a few people who are just nausy at loads of other different things. So, I mean, Jimmy is Jimmy Grayson is a pretty nausy bloke when it comes to rugby. Um, doesn't shut up about code. Um, who else is there? It's a tough one. There's a fair, there's a fair few noises at the club. Um, George Furbank, definitely. I mean, his whole, his whole life revolves around me. He's going to kill me for saying it's the first time I went to his house. I mean, we must have been about, I would think I was 19. He was at 18 at the time. He just signed at um, Saints and was like training with the first team, whatever. And he still had a poster of Ben Foden up in his bedroom. And I swear on my life, I'm, I'm not making that up. It's, I think that was a Johnny Wilkinson um, book by his uh, bedside table as well. So um, in terms of nausea behaviour, I think George Furbank has, uh, has got to be up there. Um, how bad was Hask at Northampton from Bull Barker, 678? Uh, oh, Hask, Hask, Hask was like top bloke at the club. He didn't play a, a lot of rugby mind. I think he had... Um, Probably, probably one game, from proper full game, and and he had an absolute stormer. I remember, but um, yeah, in terms of, I mean, I think what what you get with Hask is is a is a massive social social side as well. So, what he brought to the club in terms of crack and feel around the place and and, and team morale was was worth his weight in gold. Really, I mean, I know he didn't play a lot of rugby, but and the social side of things. I mean, he was he was class for us, really. I think, um, especially with a young team and. A guy with a lot of experience as well. He's very keen to offer his knowledge and have a little bit of crack about it as well. So yeah, Hask Hask was um Hask was class, even though he didn't didn't play a lot of rugby. Um this one's from Ben uh R. E. Lambert. Um, Ober or Southward. I mean the Suffolk I'm a Suffolk boy, so both of those are a special special place to me. But um I think I probably spent more time in Oldborough growing up, being a being an Ipswich boy, it's slightly closer. Um and um yeah, just some fond memories. Walk, walking along the beach there, walking the walking the dog along the beach and, and, and going to the mermaid for some fish and chips as well. So um yeah, that, that holds a special special place for me. And Oldbury was a is a is a place I still like to go back and visit. If I'm honest, um, what we got here, Jack Palmer one. What's your favourite sport outside of rugby? Um, that's a tough that's a tough one actually. Um. I probably the, the sport I'm, I watch most away from rugby is is probably my football. Being a being a Spurs fan since pretty much day one. I mean, I think the first piece of clothing I wore was a Spurs baby growth. So um, yeah, I've always always been a Spurs fan. But um, in, in terms of watching watching football, there's there's, there's not many other teams I watch apart from Spurs these days. Um, sort of fell out of love with. A lot, a lot of football. I used to watch pretty much every game that I, that I possibly could. But I think there's some, something I enjoy watching most is probably boxing at the moment. I think the the way that 
the, the boxing at the moment, the way the heavyweight division is set up, it's an exciting time and something that um, I really enjoy watching. Um, I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of lads at the club who sort of um, who invest a lot of time into reading about players of loads of different sports and knowing players. There's a lot of sports. I mean, there's not. I don't think there's a sport I don't really enjoy watching. I watch a lot of things, but not to say I know everything about it. But um, yeah, I think I think bo- boxing and football, boxing and football for sure. Um, Rob London, where is the beard at? Um, it's on its way back, I promise. Um, it makes me look more Arabic than I am <laughs> having, the, having the beard. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I shaved it off from November, obviously trying to raise a bit of money with the, with the England boys, um, which I don't think my mum was too happy with. Obviously, she, she liked me raising the, raising the money, but um, I don't think she was too keen on the on the moustache or what was trying to be a moustache. So, um, yeah, that, that went pretty quickly. I'm trying to grow back the beard just a little bit, some, some loose stubble as we speak. Um, there's a couple from Genji here, which I'm not reading now. I refuse to play, I refuse to play Genji's games. Um, he says, I'll, I'll read this one. Genji says, why do you always ask me to buy games to play them? And then you stop playing after, after a day. The, th- the thing with Genji, right, is he's got all these good ideas about all these games we can play and I've always followed him in. He he's the one who always says, "Okay, buy this game, buy that. We'll play it." Especially when you're on camp and you've got so much time to spare, we just find we, I don't know, find our way through loads of different games. And I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example: World of Warcraft. He was like, we'd, "We, I think we spent about two hours trying to pick different characters on camp." Um, I picked a character which I was really happy with. And Genji wasn't happy with his character. And because Genji wasn't happy with his character, we both had to stop playing. And that's, a, that's the type of bo- bloke Genji is. So it's not me changing the game. It's Genji playing the game, not happy with the choices he's making, and then us having to switch something else. So it's all Genji's fault in terms of that. Um, best thing about playing uh, for Saints from good bad rugby. Um, to be honest, I think at the moment it's... It's really exciting because a lot of these boys that are coming through and that we've played with um, at the moment, we've known each other since we're 13, 14 through academy. Um, So to have that group of boys that we've sort of come through together and are playing together and even our first few of the academies, you sort of see the first team players all together and some of you make it into that squad at different times and you sort of you don't feel like an outsider in that group, but you know, they're obviously not your closest friends at the club. And now I think we're at a point at the club where every single member of that squad we play in we've known for years. And it feels like, I don't know, they, they, they really are your, your, your best mates that you're going out to play with. So um, that's, that's, an, that's, I think, the best thing about playing for Saints. I just think, obviously, with a young team, it's been a bit of a challenge sort of finding a way and, and, and trying to get that, that experience into a team which hasn't really been playing a lot or hasn't, hasn't got heaps of experience and and that's always been a been a learning process for us at the club but um in terms of enjoyment I think yeah obviously playing with your, playing with your best mates pretty much every day you, you, I wouldn't really change it if I'm honest um how much of an experience was Japan um from rugby at cheeky try as well um oh yeah Japan was incredible like absolutely incredible I mean it probably came completely unexpected to me I mean I got I mean, up up until last season, I'd played I think six times for for my club um, over the space of four or five years. So, I sort of the the season I got invited onto that international setup. It, for me, it was just like it was it was sort of a breakthrough season. I was just trying to find my feet a little bit, and then to be called into a rugby world cup preparation camp was just like I mean, it, it is is a is a bit surreal and all. I'm seeing it all came pretty quickly so for me that experience was it was it like completely unexpected and I think that's probably why for me I, I felt like I performed in that in that area because it was like our pressures off like I never felt like I was meant to achieve it anyway so I might as well just rip in and and, and enjoy it so yeah I mean uh, absolutely incredible experience but obviously um not the not the result we wanted as a group in the end, but I think looking back on that, they're probably some of my fondest fondest memories in rugby. Just trying to be with a group of lads on a world stage, playing the best teams in the world, trying to be the best team in the world, and being away from home and in, in an awesome country as well. It's um, 
it was, a, it was an experience I'll, I'll never forget for sure. Um, this one's from Corey underscore 07. Who's been the hardest player to tackle so far in your career that you played against? Um, I think there's two that really, really spring to mind. I think we, <laughs> basically, I think Northampton Saints were out of the European competition. This was years, years ago. I think it was maybe my fourth or fifth game for the club. Um, so as a result, we sort of sent the uh, sent the bomb squad over to Montpellier <laughs> to sort of the young lads to get um, experience, uh, aka a dishing. Uh, <laughs> and um, we played against uh, Nemani De Dolo, who's at um, Tigers now. And I mean, just seeing him run towards you, it's like, right? If I go up top, he's gonna bounce me. If I yeah, if I go down low, he's gonna run round me. Um, so it's it, it, that that one was sort of a lose lose and a bit of an eye opener and obviously I haven't had the uh, opportunity to play against him at Tigers yet but um, something I'm looking forward to I mean he's run I think he ran over me about two three times in that game so um, him and the other one that springs to mind is Snotty Snotty from Newcastle um, similar sort of thing he can run around you he can step you in a in a phone box and he can run over you as well so. Um, yeah, some, someone he is someone that I probably did probably watched towards uh, what what to be honest, watched a lot growing up, um, and then seeing him and actually playing against him and trying to figure out how to how to tackle him. He's a he was a tricky one as well. Um, songs from Fiji Josh. How would you rate your performance at School Musical Pendragon? I mean, it, I wasn't going to win any Oscars. I'll give you that. Uh, <laughs> we. Um, Oh yeah, that, um, I mean, I was terrible. If I'm if I'm honest, it was awful. It was genuinely awful. It was, I think, as a as a rugby a school rugby team, we were sort of. Um, I was I was captain, and this and the music teacher sort of said, "Well, I think it would be good for you and the lads to sort of get involved in the musical." So we thought, okay, yeah, we'll be lifting props on and off the stage, like helping out, maybe like selling tickets, whatever, and. We got there and realised it was auditions, and we, before we knew it, we were all part of some school play. It was called Pendragon, and to this day, I still can't tell you exactly what it was about. Um, it was all in old English, but um, yeah, my my performance was awful. But in all honesty, I actually really enjoyed it. It was it's, it's it was similar to being in a in a rugby environment in a way because it's a group of people all perform like trying to work towards something and perform and over a, a span of a week, seven nights, seven performances. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed it, but I was awful. Um, Rob Hinton, Dylan Hartley or Tommy Duffy? To Tommy Duffy was a hell of a player. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get that twisted. He was a, um, someone I played with at club, um, played pretty much every position on the pitch, I think, apart from second row. Um, uh, good, good, good mate of mine, but... I'm afraid, Rob. I'll, I think I'll have to go big deals um, for 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 obvious reasons. <laughs> Joe Reed says, "When you first came into the England setup, what was it like working with the senior members? Is Owen as hard a taskmaster taskmaster as everyone says?" Um, yeah, I think for me, um, I think that was, that was the biggest eye opener from going from club rugby to international rugby. Um, is a very um, is is a switch in mindset. I think between how players criticise each other. I mean, I think if sometimes at club things get heated on the pitch because people don't think things are going the right way or things should be done different different ways. But at the club, it will at um, England. Sorry, everyone's on on the same page and everyone's demanding such high standards of each other. And Owen was probably the one that was leading that from the boys. So. He's one of these guys that it, it's done his way and he d demands high standards. And, and, and I think that's how he understands. That's how you get the best out of a team. And I think that's probably one of the things that helped us massively to go out as far as we did in that setup about not being afraid to demand standards from each other. And, and us as one cap, two cats, three cats, being able to demand standards from him as well. And for him to t sort of take stuff on board from what, us younger lads were saying or less experienced lads were saying as well just goes to show that it was always about trying to be on the same page and trying to get the best out of the squad so 
yes, he is a task, good, hard taskmaster, definitely. But um, I think it's 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 definitely to the benefit of the team and that whole the whole culture of being an international environment. Definitely, England is is sort of built around that, which is which has been really positive and something we're trying to trying to take back to the club as well. Um, we said hi, Lewis. If you could bring one, if you bring in one player, past or present, to the Saints team to influence it both on and off the pitch, who would it be and why? Um, I'd have to go Dylan for that, without a doubt. Um, Dylan probably similar, very similar character to Owen in the way he sort of demands standards and um, runs the show on and off the pitch. You sort of know that. Um, Dylan is always going to be there. He's always going to be confrontational and he's always going to back you and, and the team. And and he's probably one of the most committed rugby players I've been, I've had the pleasure of, of, of working with really. So Dylan, without a doubt, I think in that respect, um, hell of a leader and something, something that I think us young lads could probably learn, learn a lot from as well in terms of leadership and playing and mindset and, everything you think you just look, look at the amount of adversity in in his career and still continue to perform as well so um yeah Dylan, Dylan without without a doubt really um how often do you get called Lewis Ludlow I'd say at least every three or four days <laughs> I'd say every time every time Gloucester play there's probably about five or six tweets that say oh well played today mate or you were terrible today, mate, or <laughs> anything. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much every week. And to be honest, I think Lewis probably gets the same same saying, Lewis Ludlam, you were awful today. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, so yeah, he, he usually directs those tweets back to me. But um, yeah, it's um, it's pretty, pretty often, actually. Um, custard creams or bourbon biscuits? Easy bourbons. Um, Who's better, you now or Prime Hask? <laughs> it's a brutal question. Um, yes, I've, I've, it's got to be Hask. It's got to be the Hask in every regard. I mean, he's um, it's a bit, you know, Hask is a, is a tough one because he's got a lot of stick over the past um, online and playing ability. But you forget this guy's a, a seasoned international and his I know his body sort of packed in probably before he wanted to in the end but in terms of experience and his knowledge about the game and um everything Hask is um hella hella professional and like I say his body packed in but his his mind and his commitment and his professionalism that never that never really went went away went away sorry and it's probably why he sort of decided to go into a different sports sports path so um yeah it's, it's got to be the Hask living legend isn't it um what ground would you love to play at but haven't yet? Um, that's a tough one. It is a tough one. Um, one of the one of the favorite my favorite grounds I played at is at the Viva, um, which was a obviously we, we didn't we, we got pumped a little bit, but to be there and, and, and playing in that in that crowd and that atmosphere was unbelievable. And I think somewhere similar to that I'd like to play is probably at Racing. Um, to feel the atmosphere and in that crowd against I think they've got probably something like 10, 12 internationals in their team and go over there and, and, and be able to challenge yourself against the best over there and, and their fans as well in, in Paris, I think would be, um, would be an unbelievable, unbelievable experience and hopefully something I get to get to do one day. Any team you would love to play for if the opportunity arose? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me because obviously I've, gr I've grown up supporting Northampton and um, coming through the academy at Northampton and always been at Northampton and that's always sort of been the focus to, to play for Northampton. So um, in terms of other premiership clubs, I, I don't think there's another club I'd, I'd really, really want to want to go to. Um, team I'd, I'd love to play for, a touring team I'd always love to play for is, is the Bar Bars, definitely. Um, I mean, I think that set up and the history behind that that touring side is something that's good on the pitch, off the pitch. Um, the social, I know probably haven't got the best reputation at the, mo at the moment in terms of what's happened, but to get the opportunity to put on a bar bar shirt, I think would, um, would be exciting. I think other, other, other rugby clubs, um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to play in Japan at some point. I think being out there and having that, the experience of being out there was, was awesome. And 
I like to travel and I'd like to live in a different country at some point and maybe at the end of my career, who knows, I'd love to potentially go out there and, and, and play rugby. Um, and then go to post gym food, um, that's a tough one, whatever I can get in my body at that point. Um, I've always been a, uh, a tough gain. I've, n- I've never put on weight very well. So, um, yeah, it's just about trying to get food in me as, as, as quickly as possible. Um, and I think that is it for the questions. So um, appreciate all your questions. Um, hope you've enjoyed it, learned a little bit more about me. And hopefully you will have a, a very, very Merry Christmas. Cheers.